Hello everyone, I just purchased the uh, Rockat Iskew Plus Force FX gaming keyboard and wanted to do a quick review setup video for it since I didn't find any myself online. And the instruction videos that were provided by Rockat uh, were quite vague. Uh, I'm going to first start off with the build quality of the keyboard. Quality of the keyboard feels quite nice for being a plastic keyboard. It's a membrane keyboard, so it isn't for those who prefer any mechanical keys. It's still quite satisfying pressing the keys on this keyboard though, and overall it uh, feels quite responsive. At the top of the keyboard there's a row of hotkeys for various Windows features including volume control, play, skip, reverse, and browser and Internet Explorer hotkeys. A button to control the brightness of the keyboard is immediately to the left of the aforementioned hotkeys. There are five different brightness settings. The overall brightness of the keys is quite nice compared to my previous TechNet keyboard and the colors are a bit more vivid too. On the left side of the keyboard there are five programmable keys that you can customize to your liking within the Rockat Swarm software. We'll get to that later though. At the bottom of the keyboard, there are three settings buttons that are more specific to keyboard functionality options. These are also edited within the Swarm software. The rest of the keys are self-explanatory. However, it's important to note here that the QWEASD keys are all pressure sensitive. Uh, now, to set up the keyboard, you'll need to use the Rockat Swarm software. After plugging in the keyboard for the first time, Head over to www.rockat.org slash rockatswarm. I'll post a link to it in the description there. Um, scroll to the bottom and click the download button. The software is quite large, coming in at about 100 megabytes. Uh, so just a heads up there. And after downloading the software, start it up. It should automatically detect your keyboard. It'll most likely need to update your new keyboard uh, for the first time you've installed it, so let the software download the firmware and install it. Once it's finished, a window will appear prompting you to disconnect and reconnect your keyboard to the USB slot, then press OK afterwards. Um, now the basic setup is completed, you'll want to create a few new profiles to match the desired options for when you play a game. Be sure your keyboard is selected within the Swarm software, then select the plus icon in the Game Profiles tab. This creates a new profile. I'm going to label mine Test for the purpose of this demo. Now select the Force Effects Settings tab, and in here you can see all the different presets for your different games. Only one of the presets that is used was interesting to me, and that was the GTA 5 driving preset. It mimics the analog triggers and sticks on a controller to allow you to control the car similarly. Uh, the force settings weren't as interesting to me, as it basically just turns the different pressure points on those keys into macros themselves. Uh, here, as an example, if you press down the W key, um, the low sensitivity range of the W key, around 5 to 30% sensitivity or so, the keyboard would mimic you pressing uh, Control W, which is crouch in most games. Uh, when you press above 30%, say 30 to 70%, it would act like you are normally pressing W. Uh, you could then program it above 70% to do forward prone or something of your choice, similar to that. I'm just going to create a simple analog walking setup though, uh, so just select custom settings, switch it to all analog, uh, like I'm doing here. I'm just going to leave the Q and E keys as is for now because I have no use for those being pressure sensitive. Once you're done doing that, press the force keys toggle button and you should choose which key to bind to for switching on the pressure sensitivity. Uh, for me, I just chose the uh, T2 option. Don't bother with the other two settings uh, besides that. Um, calibration seems fine out of the box to me. Uh, click Apply. Make sure your new profile is selected, then click OK, and you can close the application by pressing that OK button. Uh, now, once you're in-game, make sure you hit that pressure sensitivity toggle. For me, it's uh, T2, and you should notice all the lights on the top right corner uh, just went out. So one of them should have been on beforehand, but now they're all out. 
Um, if you press any of the WASD keys though, you should see the bar start to move relative to the pressure you're putting on the keys. Um, then, then you know that it's working correctly. Here's an example of using this created analog profile that I made in-game. Overall, I highly recommend this keyboard as it is much cheaper than the alternatives and still feels premium. I'll put a link to the Swarm software below. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, leave a comment with some constructive feedback and help me improve below. Thanks for watching. See ya.